Hi guys, I'm Norbert from Ever After Photographers and today we have a very important video where we explore four different storage device solutions, their pluses and their minuses, and which one may be the best for you not only right now but also in the future. Now whether you're just starting out as a wedding photographer or you're a seasoned pro, there really comes a time where you just feel overwhelmed by the amount of data. We're talking thousands and thousands of images from every wedding shot. Now, you want to make sure that that data is accessible, but you also want to make sure that that data is safe. And there's really two parts to that. The first part is the actual device solution that you have in place. And the second one is the backup strategy. So today we're going to focus on the devices themselves. And in the future video, I'm going to talk about backup strategy. So probably the most common type of device for your storage needs is a single external drive. Here we have two great examples of external single hard drives from Lassie. We have their Lassie Rugged series, and then we have this larger D2 Professional series hard drive as well. Now you may ask yourself, what is the main difference between these two types of hard drives? Well, this smaller hard drive clearly is much more portable, and because of this rubberized exterior, it is much more protected in case you do drop it when moving it from location to location. On the other hand though, these types of smaller hard drives tend to have much more smaller capacity, so less storage space, and they tend to be slower. Now I say they tend to be because there is a version with a hard drive with no moving parts called the SSD, which is quite fast. However, it tends to have much lower capacity and is much more expensive. On the other hand, the larger hard drive tends to have a large internal hard drive, which has a much higher capacity. So we're talking four terabyte, eight terabyte, 16 terabyte capacities. These tend to have also much faster hard drives. So if general speed and capacity is what you're looking for, then you're certainly looking for one of these drives. On the negative side, of course, they're not as quite as portable, although I actually use one of these drives inside a Pelican case to provide an offsite backup for some of my most important files. Now, if you are looking for one of these two types of drives to start backing up your data beyond what you have on your computer, I do suggest looking for three things. The first one is the general build quality and they range from plastic to more of a metal enclosure. Uh, if you are moving the drive a lot, the metal enclosure does make a lot of sense. If you're looking to save some money, then the plastic enclosure is just fine. The second thing that I would look for is the actual drive inside, okay? Some of these drives actually use what's called a consumer-friendly or a desktop drive inside, while others use more of a robust drive which is more of a professional drive, they tend to be faster and they tend to be a little bit more reliable, but of course you pay more for those types of drives. And then the third type of thing I would look for is the connectivity, okay? So some of these come with USB connectivity, some of them come with uh, Thunderbolt connectivity. Generally speaking, for single drive enclosures, all you're really looking for is a USB-C, uh, a USB 3.0 connectivity. Uh, you really are not going to need a Thunderbolt connection, whether it's Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4, unless you have one of the super fast SSD drives, then it makes sense. But for all other mechanical drives, I would stick with USB 3.0, USB-C connection right here. Uh, they're plenty fast. So just to summarize, when it comes to external drives, their big benefits are they're relatively inexpensive, costing between $50 to $400, depending on the drive. And they are portable, relatively portable in some cases, and very portable in others. Uh, and finally, they're simple to use. So you just plug them into your laptop or your PC, boom, there you go, really simple to use. On the negative side though, um, the storage is limited. So once you actually fill up a full drive, you're done. In most cases, you're gonna go out and you're gonna buy a new drive. In some cases, it is actually possible to replace the internal drive with a larger capacity drive. If you do that, you're gonna void your warranty. I don't suggest it uh, well, until you actually run out of warranty on one of these drives. Uh, but in generally speaking, um, they do have a finite capacity. Um, and then 
The other big negative in my mind is their lack of redundancy. So what I mean by redundancy is that once this drive fails, it fails. And let's be serious, all drives will eventually fail. Manufacturers have a life limit for each and every one of their drives and eventually drives do fail. So when one of these single external drives fails, it fails completely and your data in most cases is lost. No redundancy. Now let's talk about a drive that actually does have redundancy. In front of me is a second device solution, which I think really hits the sweet spot for most photographers, including myself up until recently. But before we do that, now would be a great time to hit that like button. And if you are finding value in this content, it would be great if you could subscribe and hit that bell button so that you're notified of upcoming content as well. The Lassie 2 Big Dock is a great example of a two bay DAS unit, but there are other examples, uh, most notably from SanDisk, the G Drive series, which are also great. Now I said DAS, what does that actually mean? Well, it simply means direct attached storage. So all you got to do is take the cable from the back of the unit and plug it into your computer and there it is. Just like an external drive, you see it right there on your desktop, you're able to put your files into the drive easily. Now, what actually makes this specific unit very unique is the fact that it also doubles as a dock. So as you plug that cable into your laptop or desktop, you immediately get access to these ports right here. There's a card reader right here. And on the back also, at the same time, even though you're just plugging into one cable, you're also connecting to your monitor through a display port. Uh, and you also can daisy chain a Thunderbolt devices and there's an extra USB port here as well. And it has USB port in the front here also. But what really makes this unit stand out is the redundancy. And what do I mean by redundancy? Well, again, it's about keeping your data safe. So this specific unit has two separate drives. I'm just gonna pull these out because they do pull out actually very easily. Uh, you can just lift this up and you slide up. And there you go, here is a four terabyte drive from Seagate. These are actually the same drives that are inside the drives, single external drive enclosures, the large drives. Uh, and this is a four terabyte drive. There's another four terabyte drive right there, which makes this entire unit an eight terabyte drive. Um, and they cost approximately six to $700 in, in case you're wondering. Now, what makes the unit so unique when it has two drives is that if you set this up in a RAID 1 mirroring array, which is actually quite easy to do through the included software, um, this unit will drive, will write your data to both drives at the same time. So it'll drive, it'll write the data to the top drive and the bottom drive at the very same time. Now, why is that useful? Of course, if one of the drives fails, and I mentioned previously that all drives eventually do fail, if one of the drive, let's say the top one drive fails, the bottom one still has your data. Now, it's great, it's amazing, but it is not a backup strategy. And the reason for that is that you could actually erase, for example, something from the unit and it'll erase it from both the top and the bottom drive. Okay. You could also break the array fairly easily, and unfortunately in this case, simply by pulling one of the drives out. If you, if you do that, even if it's accidental, and in my case it actually happened, I just barely just kind of notched the drive. I wanted to move it up to the side. I went like this, and the drive just came out just a little bit, but it broke the array. Now, I was able to actually put in a new blank hard drive inside, and the array was rebuilt using the bottom drive, so it works really well but it just to show, goes to show you that the array itself can break too. The electronics inside this unit can break and it could render both drives then inaccessible. So obviously you don't want that. You wanna back up your data. So that's why it's so important to back up your data in a second place, like let's say backing up the data from here to an external drive right here. Now, I'm gonna talk in a minute about the third solution, which I think is by far the most robust out of these solutions. Um, and maybe it's not something that you're gonna get into right away, but it's something that you should consider and something you should plan for. This is the 1821 NAS from Synology. Now there are other types of NASs out there, most notably from QNAP, but since I'm not familiar with QNAP and I am with Synology, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about why I think this NAS device is one of the best places to store your images. Now, the first thing we need to talk about is what is a NAS? Well, NAS stands for Network 
attached storage. And although, yes, you can just plug in this, this device directly to your computer and be done with it, you can also plug this device into your network. And through Ethernet cable, now you will be able to share all of your files with anyone that's on the network, whether it be your colleagues, or also online through to your clients. You're also able to remotely access all of your files. So let's say that you are working uh, uh, remotely and you need access to some of the files here on the NAS. You can actually log in through a password protected portal and now you have access to those raw files. So that's great for connectivity, but there's really two other things that really impress me about this device. And the first one is scalability and the second one is redundancy. So first let's talk about scalability. You can see here there are eight drive bays in the front, okay? And currently I only have four of the drive bays. Um, and this is a good time to talk about pricing because pricing really depends on the number of drive bays that the unit, the NAS unit has. In this case, this eight drive bays uh, NAS costs about $1,500. So it's certainly not inexpensive and it doesn't come with any of the drives. So you need to actually put in the drives yourself. Now the process of putting in the drives is actually pretty straightforward. So let me actually just show you how to do that. Uh, you just do that. And you pull out this tray and here I have an internal drive. Now these are the same types of drives that can be found on these devices as well. And I'm gonna pop that in here. And hopefully this is gonna go smoothly. Yeah. Okay. Now currently I have four drives inside this A drive NAS unit. And you don't need to actually put all eight drives at the same time into an eight drive unit. You can actually start with one drive and then eventually as your storage needs expand, you can add additional drives. And the great thing about this unit is they don't all need to be the same size. So you can actually mix and match sizes, which is um, not usual for these types of units. So if you do have some drives lying around, you can actually put in, in my case, there's an eight terabyte, there's a four terabyte, and I think a couple of two terabytes in there as well. I'll get this in here. Here we go. I'm going to slide that in, get that in here. And these actually trays lock, unlike this guy. This actually locks, you just need a little bit of a key and then it doesn't accidentally pop out, which is great too. So this is the way you can actually expand your array um, up to the eight drives. So it gives you a, quite a lot of storage. But then we, we also need to talk about, which I think is a really important topic, which is again, redundancy, protecting that data. So, um, with this type of redundancy, if any one of these drives would fail, and as we talked about, eventually all drives do fail. If any one of these drives fails, you would actually receive an email notifying you that a certain drive has failed. Then you come home and you'd be like, oh, there's the red dot, uh, and this drive would be unhealthy. So you can actually take out the drive and you could pop in a fresh new drive and slide it into the array, and that array would be rebuilt. So all the parity data that's been saved on all the other drives will now help rebuild all of the data and your entire array will be healthy again. Now with that, you might think, well, that's great, but that's my backup. Well, it isn't because really the array can break for any number of reasons. The device itself can break, there can be theft. You could actually erase uh, one of the files and then it'll erase it off of all of the drives. So again, you need something like this, let's say an external drive, and this external drive, you can actually just plug in to the back of this Synology NAS, and I do that, and every night it actually backs up all that data, all the important data onto this specific drive, so that in case something happens to the data here, I still have a backup. Now, in the past, NAS units have not been very fast. And that's one of the main reasons why photographers and videographers haven't really used them. In fact, uh, general, most yeah, NAS units are about half the speed of the direct attached storage units. So one of these units in terms of the drive speed. And that has a lot to do with connectivity. What impresses me about this unit and other units that have this type of connectivity is that you suddenly have double the speed of these units and often cases, and in some cases even triple. But for that to happen, you need to have 10G Ethernet. And what that means is in this specific unit, you can actually put in a card in the back that's a 10 gigabyte Ethernet card. You can use a 10 gigabyte Ethernet cable and you can use an adapter to actually plug into your computer. And now you have 10 gigabyte Ethernet connectivity to all of your files. And what I'm getting right now is twice the speed of external hard drives 
compared to the external hard drive. So twice the speed, which is phenomenal. It actually allows me to edit in Lightroom directly off of this device. So I hope this demonstrates why I think this is one of the best devices out there, but it doesn't come without some negative thoughts. First of all, it's obviously not portable. You can't really move it around. Secondly, it is expensive. It really is, especially at $1,500 and the need to actually put in additional drives. And thirdly, it is not the easiest device to set up. You do really have to know what you're doing. It's pretty easy to do once you kind of get into it. Um, but I do plan on making a video specifically for photographers to show you how to set up this device uh, from putting in the drives to actually connecting it to your network and your, and your uh, computer. So I hope that this has been useful. I know at the very beginning um, I mentioned that we're going to show you four types of solutions and we talked about three here. Well, the fourth one that I want to just mention briefly um, is cloud storage. Now, at this point, I believe that cloud storage is a great supplement to any one of these storage solutions and really used for backup because A, it's still fairly expensive and you don't get that much storage. So you might be spending two terabytes uh, of storage might cost you uh, $20, $30. But if you're looking for like more terabytes, let's say like 10 terabytes, that's going to cost you over $100 that you're paying every single month. So it's a great solution for a backup, but not really to uh, replace any one of these solutions here. I sincerely hope that you found this video useful and if you did and you hadn't done so already please click that like icon and subscribe and hit that bell notification to be notified of other great content such as this. And with that thank you for watching.